talk about? Long-term food storage. Why are you yelling? <laughs> Give me my key. <laughs> Long-term food storage. And we're going to eat seven-year-old rice. In today's episode of Homestead How, we're gonna eat seven year old rice that we stored in these buckets way back in 2012. And we're gonna take a look at Wrangler Star's recent video where he stocked up on four years of long term food storage. And we're gonna talk about why that is not viable for our homestead. This is gonna be my last meal before I go to the emergency room. Actually, it looks really good. Ready? Mm -hmm. I'm so scared. <laughs> I don't know what is more scary, crawling around in my dark, moldy crawl space looking for seven-year-old rice to eat, or walking through my 14-year-old daughter's bedroom to access said crawl space. Godspeed, I'm going in. Oh my goodness, I feel like I need to blur this out somehow. I don't know if you can see that, but it says November of 2012, which is seven years ago. Seven years ago, we bought a, some bulk rice from Sam's Club. We put it into Mylar bags. We sucked all the air out of it. We put some oxygen absorbers in it, sealed it all up with an iron, and then put it in this five gallon bucket. And it's been sitting for seven years. In today's episode, I'm gonna cook some of this rice and see if it's still edible. Uh, what's behind me in the shop here? This is. Uh... All right, so this is Wrangler Star showing us his four years worth of emergency food he purchased. I think it's absolutely awesome. I love Wrangler Star. He's one of our favorite YouTubers. He actually inspired us to become homesteaders. Um, before we moved into our homestead here, I watched tons of his videos. I think the first video I ever saw from Cody was his ram pump video. And then we watched his greenhouse video. And we actually, a year after living in our homestead, we built our own greenhouse in a similar style to Cody's with the gambrel style roof. So we love Wrangler Star. I think this is an awesome video. The only reason I'm making this video is because I don't think his way of preparing with four years of emergency food is viable for most homesteaders. I know it's not viable for us. It's gonna be just way too expensive. If you have the money, then I think it's definitely worthwhile. It sounds like it's a great company. I followed the link in Cody's video and I checked it out and um, they've got great reviews. They come in heavy duty containers. All of the food is in single portion serving sizes and resealable containers, which is awesome. And it's supposed to taste really good too. So it looks like a really good product. So if you have the money for it, I think it's a great solution. I just know as us, a lot of homesteaders out there probably can't afford that. I followed the link over and I checked it out and it's actually a thousand dollars for six months worth of food for one person. So we have six people in my family. So that would be $6,000 for six months of food for my entire family. And Cody did it for four years. If I did it for four years for all six of us, we'd be looking at $48,000 for four years of emergency food. There's no way we could do that. So the reason we're making this video is because we've done some alternate methods, some cheap methods to uh, storing food long-term. We've used two methods. So there's two methods that we use for long-term food storage on a budget. One of those methods was this rice. You can see all of these containers of rice. Several years ago, seven years ago, we stocked up most of this rice. And then about four or five years ago, we moved to this homestead. We actually had to put all of these in the U-Haul truck, bring it here, and it's been stored down underneath our house since then. So that's one method. And we're gonna taste this rice today and see if it's still good. I hope it's good. The second way that we've gone about storing food long-term on the cheap without a big budget is Aldi's and purchasing canned food. 
We've done a lot of research and we found, this was a couple years ago so it may have changed, but we found that if you look at the cost per calorie, the green beans that they sell at Aldi's are your best bet. And we went and bought cartons and cartons and cartons of green beans. We literally filled up two carts as high as we could with uh, green beans. We also got corn and some other vegetables. And uh, we're using those for our long-term food storage. The nice thing about that is it's extremely inexpensive. It's already canned for you. And if you're like our family of six, we go through a lot of canned veggies anyways. So what we do is we, we have a big stockpile of it and then we use it. And then once we take a big chunk out of the stockpile that we have, we just purchase more and we make sure to rotate it so that we're always eating the oldest food that we have on stock and we're putting the newest food in the back and then we just keep rotating through it. I'm hoping I can find it. I saw a video of someone that ate some canned food that was like 25 years old. Because of the high heat, high pressure system they use, they remove all the air when they can vegetables. They'll last a really, really long time. Now I'm not suggesting that people go out and they store food for 10 years and then eat it. But if you do like we did, you can get a pretty big stockpile so that you have some reserves in case something should go south and you can't go to the grocery store and buy food anymore. And if you work through those reserves and you just use them, constantly use them and then refill them, you have that large stockpile, but you're also processing through it so the food isn't just sitting there for 10 years. That's the second thing that we've done. And it's been really inexpensive doing it that way. You can buy 100 cans of vegetables at Aldi's for under $50. That's a lot, 100 cans. I mean, that adds up quickly. So we bought much more than that and then we process through it. And that's the reason we're doing this video to show an alternative that's worked for us. Hopefully worked. We'll see as soon as I open this big bucket of rice up and see if it's still edible after seven years sitting in this bucket. So let's get out of this crawl space and take a look, cook some of this rice up and uh, see if I have to make a trip to the hospital or not. All right, so we just got this. We're gonna take it upstairs. No one's in our Airbnb rental unit right now. It's nice and neat up there. So we're gonna try to cook some rice up there and see if this is any good. And Katie's gonna eat a whole bunch of it, right Katie? Shake your head with the camera, yes or no? Wait, let's say hi to Poof. Hello Poof. Poof, you wanna eat some rice with us? Hey, you wanna eat some rice with us? This Poof's all messy. Why don't you clean his Poof off? Come on, let's go upstairs and eat some rice. Is Poof gonna come with? Sure. Come on, Poof! Hopefully there's no guests up here anymore. Ooh, they made the bed. Ooh, there's a basketball thing. Yeah, you haven't seen it yet? No. I haven't been up here in like a week. Katie thinks it's gonna be disgusting. She's holding the camera right now. We're gonna open it up. Hopefully it's edible. Hopefully we can cook it. And uh, yeah, let's just do it. Uh, it looks clean in here. This is pretty disgusting. These are Mylar bags that we purchased on Amazon and we put the rice in it and then we put these little oxygen absorbers in it which you'll see in here hopefully. And then we use the vacuum to get all the air out and then we use the board and an iron to iron this. So this is full of rice. It looks like there's no air has gotten in there so let's see. We're gonna open this up and if it's good we're gonna end up eating this for the next couple months because there's a ton of rice in here. Here we go. Waiting for a bad smell to come up. Some smoke, a bunch of maggots. This is the op oxygen absorber. We bought these on Amazon too. That sucks any additional air out that's in there. Put that off to the side. Look at it, it looks good. Oh, here's another O2 absorber. All right, we have a rice open. It looks perfectly fine. There's like nothing in it. Like, I don't know what I was expecting to see, but Jen was saying, oh, maybe there'd be maggots or something in there, but it's completely sealed. It looks just like perfectly good rice. So we're gonna try to cook it now. Do you know how to cook rice, Katie? Oh, well, you boil it and then. 
I know how to cook instant rice. <laughs> That's what I was, uh, what I was thinking. We're cooking 16 ounces of rice. We're gonna let that boil and then we're gonna put the rice in. So we'll be right back. And Katie's gonna go play basketball. I don't know how to turn it on. Should we take them with? This is our Airbnb rental. Some people ask us, how do you afford your homestead? This is our second unit that's attached to our house. Um, it's kind of like a duplex. We used to, we were gonna initially rent this out. We actually lived up here when we first purchased this. Let's do this. We actually lived up here when we first purchased this place and we remodeled the downstairs because it was unlivable. And then this just sat for a long time and we were gonna rent it out traditionally, but we said, let's put it on Airbnb and see what happens. And it just started booking up like crazy. So pretty much every weekend it's booked up over winter time and it's booked up like the entire summer. People come up and there's uh, some touristy things about an hour away and we just live in a really cool town called Montello. So this is our rental unit and we have this arcade themed room in here which is really cool. Jen just bought this basketball hoop on Craigslist or Facebook. Someone was trying to get rid of it. It was a nightmare to put together because it had no directions and it was just like a million pieces but uh, thankfully YouTube helped us with that. Then we've got this really cool, this is my favorite thing, classic arcade game that has the best arcades on it, such as Pac-Man, Junior Pac-Man. And then we have these high scores. So guests come for the weekend, they rent the place out, the game's free, we don't charge them a quarter, and they rate their high scores on there. People used to put money in here. Yeah, we had a couple quarters in there, just donations, I guess, but not necessary. And then over there, We've got some old school arcades, which are really fun. We have the classic Nintendo Entertainment System and Atari 2600. Someone was playing Pac-Man in there. And we've got a whole bunch of these, Donkey Kong and all the classic arcade games in there. So it's kind of a fun little rental, but a lot of people ask us, how do you afford your homestead? This is one way. We rent this out and it provides some nice extra income for the property. We also have our dog kennel, which we recently started. And I also work, I do internet marketing. So those are those are three things right there. So let's see how good Katie is at basketball. It's done. We followed the YouTube directions. Looks like perfectly normal rice. You're gonna taste it first or do you want me to? You can. All right, put some in the bowl. I'll be the, I'll be the test subject. I get a little baby bowl. Mm-hmm. You want to get it in the bowl? <laughs> you think it's gonna be okay? Yeah. Okay. Here, switch. This is gonna be my last meal before I go to the emergency room. Actually, it looks really good. Ready? I'm so scared. <laughs> Tastes like perfectly good rice. Probably better than instant rice. It does. It's nice and fluffy. It's like the stuff you get at a Chinese restaurant. It's perfect. Now you get to try it. Seriously, there's like nothing wrong with it. It's perfect. It tasted perfectly fine to me. Now Katie's going to test it out. It is better than instant rice. That's actually, all the rice we've ever eaten has been pretty much instant rice. And we have seven year old dirty rice that was down in the basement for seven years. <laughs> it tastes better than the instant rice. It's really good. Yeah, now that we opened it, we have all of this rice now. We can cook. So I think it's, uh, I think we need to go into stir fry season now and start having rice for dinner every single night. The only problem is, I don't think Mama will eat it. Just tell her it's instant rice. Ooh, we should do that. Should we just cook it all up and make dinner tomorrow? You're making dinner tomorrow. Don't tell your sisters. We'll feed them all seven-year-old rice and they will never know. I think the biggest takeaway and suggestion from this entire experiment was make sure that you get all the air out. That was one thing. The first bag we did, we screwed up and then my sister gave me the tip. Using a vacuum, you suck every little bit of air out 
That and then the oxygen absorbers, which are these things, which you can purchase on Amazon, do a great job to get, I guess, absorb any other additional oxygen that's in there. You don't have any oxygen in stuff that lasts years and years and years, in this case, seven years. And we've got all that rice in the crawl space, still stored up for the future, should crap ever hit the fan, we need to use it. Who wants to eat seven year old rice? Oh, that was a pathetic pop. It was like, it was like a little fart. <laughs>